and welcome to a new vodlog video. In my last in the mail segment I showed the power supply kit I got from Banggood. In this video I will assemble that, it won't be an assemble tutorial in its right but I'm sure those who don't have much experience with hand soldering will learn something from my method. I will be using a soldering iron with adjustable temperature, some water soluble flux, a solder wire and a pair of side cutters and a multimeter. And this right here is the kit which uh, I showed in the last in the mail segment. So let's open this bag and see what we get inside. We get a pair of what seems to be JST connectors. These are probably for the two uh, potentiometers for adjusting current and voltage. get the PCB of course and what's nice about this PCB is that it has the values uh, still screened on each uh, component so even though you don't get assembly instructions with this kit it should be fairly simple to identify which component goes where on this PCB seems to be reasonable quality not the greatest uh, layout I've seen but reasonable quality for the price I paid for this kit uh, if I remember correctly I paid about $11 for this kit uh, we get two screws these are probably used to uh, secure the power transistors to, to their heat sinks and a bunch of other components a small heat sink this is probably for the pre-driver transistor, the one that drives the main output transistor. A filtering cap, of course a one hang low brand. A bunch of resistors. Uh, you get the op amps. A couple of potentiometers. And as I mentioned, the GST cable uh, will allow you to just plug it in like this. So, this is it. Let's get on with the assembly. I did move the camera a bit to the left side so that I can get in here and work on the PCB a little bit better than having the camera right in front of me. Now you might ask yourself, is there a special order in which uh, you solder the components on the PCB and the answer depends but what I like to do is to first solder all the small uh, components like uh, uh, resistors and, and diodes uh, because they will be sitting at the lowest level closest to the PCB and it would be difficult to handle them if you had for example big capacitors and uh, power transistors right next to the small components so I like to start with the small components first before starting uh, don't forget the golden rule of soldering, thou shall use flux. Flux is good for soldering, it will make your life easier. In this case I'm using water soluble flux and solder wire so that I can give the board a good rinse in water after I'm finished and it will remove all flux residue. In this case I'm using the Kester uh, 2331ZX. Be careful though. Water soluble flux is highly corrosive if left on the board so you'd better clean that stuff. However, it does have the advantage that you can clean it off with plain water instead of using cleaning solvents like uh, isopropyl alcohol and other special cleaning compounds. A good PCB design will always have silk screen models that clearly indicate the polarity of components. So uh, for example, for diode it should be clearly visible which way is the cathode or the anode. This will help a lot during assembly or inspection and the same rule applies for all other polarized components. In our case we can see the capacitor here clearly has its plus and uh, minus side marked in the seal screen and uh, the same applies for the other capacitors. Uh, the IC circuits have the key uh, marking 
which indicates pin 1 right here on the left and the diodes have their cathodes marked so now that I have my uh, first resistor placed on the board I will uh, turn the board on the other side and apply some flux my soldering iron is already at the right temperature so I'm just going to touch this and do the same for the other joint and there you have it, two perfectly good soldered joints one other thing I forgot to mention is that I uh, usually use a fume extractor when doing uh, hand soldering because it's harmful for your health to inhale all those fumes generated by the soldering iron when melting the uh, solder core so I generally use uh, a fume extractor this is a DIY one I made myself it's composed of just an electrical fan and uh, I attached some carbon filter cloth on its face and secured it with this face plate and this works really well for extracting the fumes however I'm not using it in uh, during uh, this video because it makes a lot of noise and it would make uh, recording uh, really bad these are not very small components they are quite easy to solder and forgiving for the beginners and if, even if it happens to uh, damage one of these uh, components they are all jelly bean components that you can get at, at your local distributor so you don't have to worry that much you're probably only going to be delayed in your uh, assembly of the circuit if you need to order and replace some of the parts you damaged during assembly sometimes I bend the component leads outwards like this just to keep the part in place from keeping it to uh, keeping it from falling on the other side it doesn't matter which way you solder the resistors but it's nice to keep a rule for um, all the same orientation on the PCB uh, so for example if you have all the resistors that are horizontally on your PCB they should all have their uh, starting uh, marking on the left to make it easier to to read during uh, repair or inspection afterwards You don't want to push the transistor uh, all the way down to make it flush with the PCB because that would put uh, too, mu too much stress on its uh, uh, terminals by uh, applying excess force. A 
this point is important not to apply too much solder uh, to avoid creating solder bridges between the pins which are only 0.1 inch uh, away from each other and I'm going to align the uh, negative marker on the side of the capacitor with the negative marker on the PCB I do have one of those uh, plastic things that will help you bend component terminals at the right spacing but I can't be bothered searching for that because it's one of my toolboxes so I'm just going to use this pair of pliers to bend the terminals on these diodes that's about right now for this part right here we have a 7824 which is uh, of course a 24 volt linear regulator and 0.1 inch uh, 2 pin connector for a cooling fan of course this being a linear power supply it will need some cooling if you want to achieve the uh, 2 or uh, 3 amps which is rated for but I'm not going to assemble this section at all because uh, even if I'm going to use cooling on this power supply it will be a 12 volt one and I will probably use a 12 volt uh, switch mode or linear uh, power supply uh, separate from this PCB just to power my uh, cooling fan which will be 12, 12 volts as those are the most common ones you can find This one, I think it is used as a current shunt for the constant current mode of this power supply. I'm going to carefully bend its terminals at a 90 degree angle, just like that. This one goes in here. You don't get any heatsink for the output transistor. You have to provide uh, your own heatsink. But since I won't be using this at full power or even at any load, I will just be assembling it and uh, testing the output voltage without putting uh, too much load on it. It should be good enough just freestanding in the air. But of course, if you are going to use this power supply, adequate uh, heatsink is required. I'm going to solder it as far away as possible from the PCB just to keep uh, more from its leads because those act as heat sinks also. You can see most of the solder was sucked away on the top side of the PCB. And we still have some leads to cut. and our power supply assembly is pretty much finished we need to add in the uh, potentiometers now that I finished soldering the board I will give it a thorough cleaning using water and this uh, anti-static brush as you can see now the board is really clean uh, no flux residue left on the PCB which makes it look uh, very professional Now to test this circuit I am going to use my HP power supply. Uh, I have a multimeter connected uh, to the output of the power supply kit and uh, to its input and more precisely on the uh, filtering cap I will provide uh, DC voltage directly. There is no need to go through the rectifying diodes. So I have the power supply set for 24 volts let's power it up and see if our circuit works no it's not right we're only getting 
400 millivolts on the output of our power supply and it is drawing uh, 90 close to 100 milliamps and I don't think it should be drawing that much with no load let's try adjusting the pots I am turning this full scale and there is practically no change on the output voltage so something is definitely wrong with this power supply let's do some temperature checking this op amp seems to be getting hot so I will turn the power supply off the first thing you do when you assemble a kit and find it is not working you check if every component was placed at the correct spot so for the next hour I went over the PCB and checked for every single component its orientation and value and I couldn't find anything everything was right the next thing I did was to improvise some A pin sockets I basically cut them from uh, ones that uh, had higher pin count this allowed me to swap all the op amps for new ones but this didn't help either the power supply was behaving exactly the same that's when I decided to step back and try to understand the circuit better to know where to look for the problem I reverse engineered the PCB and got a schematic for it which as expected was identical to the one posted on the electronics lab website years ago except for the values for some Zener diodes which instead of uh, 5.6 volts on the uh, Chinese kit version were 5.1 volts luckily there was also a circuit description there and reading that helped me understand where my problem was the thing is this circuit generates a negative voltage to power the negative rails of the op amps and to do that it uses a reverse diode capacitor voltage multiplier which works with AC voltage tapped from the AC input so no AC no negative voltage for the op amps but this should only limit the power supply by not going down to zero volts when adjusting it not cripple it completely and making it useless there is also a protection feature on this power supply that clamps the output to ground when the power supply is turned off thus avoiding uncontrolled situations this clamping occurs when the negative supply rail collapses which is logic because that's when the power supply is turning off but what happens if you don't have any negative rail because you are using DC at the input right the output is always clamped so the power supply is not actually working this is what happens when you are building circuits without a schematic you don't know how they work exactly and it can make you assume things that are not right in my case the power supply was working all along there was nothing wrong with the power supply but simply the fact that I was supplying DC at its input instead of AC voltage so here is the power supply working with the AC input from this toroidal transformer I would uh, recommend fitting it with some 10 turn pots so you can better adjust voltage and current and uh, you can also move the constant current uh, indicator LED to the front panel of your case I hope you found this episode interesting please hit the like button below and subscribe. See you next time.